Hey team, welcome back for a Sunday School lesson this week online. Thanks for joining me, taking time out of your Sunday. Hope you've enjoyed the nicer weather we had this week. Sunshine everywhere. We even got up to like 55, I think. Got a little sun on my bald head. That's good. I look less like I'm extremely sick and old. Um, so this week, I'm going to bring a message to you, which I have titled, Don't Trust the Scouting Report. Uh, that may not make any sense to you, those words. If you're uh, an athlete or you love to follow sports, you might understand that terminology, the scouting report. But I'm going to relate it to a Bible verse as well. So hang in there with me if you are not into sports. Um, the year 2013, myself being a diehard Cavalier fan, Cleveland Cavaliers are an NBA team if you don't know that, we were going to get the first round draft pick in the NBA draft. And all the analysts were saying this guy, Anthony Bennett, was going to be the best. Coming out of UNLV, here's what it said. Six foot eight, 240 pounds. Anthony Bennett is the biggest and most talented player at UNLV in a generation. Scouting report. It says he has the highest ceiling in this year's draft. More scouting report. Another guy said, if your team is in need of a post player, who can score and dunk or tip it in, you want a guy like Anthony Bennett. If your team is in need of, per of a perimeter guy who can shoot threes, you want a guy like Anthony Bennett. If your team's in need of a physical presence that can block shots and have long arms and do good on defense, you want a guy like Anthony Bennett. I mean, we were all convinced we wanted a guy like Anthony Bennett based on the scouting reports. Long story short, we drafted him number one we gave him millions of dollars to play the game that he loves and wanted to play. He just wasn't that good. He ended up averaging less than five points a game, didn't get many rebounds, he wasn't as fast as we thought he was going to be. He got nervous, I think, for most games. Whatever the reason, he just didn't end up being very good. So you can't trust what people say all the time. The scouting report isn't always accurate. You have to use your own instincts. And when I think about the Bible, guys, I think about uh, the scouting report that Moses asked for when he sent spies to spy on the land flowing with milk and honey, the land of Canaan. I'm going to read for you from Numbers chapter 13. This is in verse 1, then I'm going to skip down a little bit. Numbers 13, 1. The Lord said to Moses, send men to explore Canaan, which I am going to give the Israelites. Send one another one leader from each of their ancestors' tribes. So God's saying, send some men to spy on it, and it said, I am giving it to you. Okay, so we'll skip a little section in there. We're going to go to verse 21. So the men explored the land from the desert of Zin to the border of Hamath. They went through the Negev into the Hebron. And then verse 23 says, When they came to the Eshel Valley, they cut off a branch with only one bunch of grapes on it. They carried it on a pole between them. These grapes were so heavy, so big, they were put on a pole between two grown men to carry them back. Uh, verse 25 says, 40 days later, they came back from scouting uh, the land, scouting the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron, the whole community, to report what they had seen. Verse 27, this is what they reported to Moses. We went to the land you sent us. It really is a land flowing with milk and honey. Here's some of its fruit. That's when they showed him the big, humongous cluster of grapes. But the people who live there are strong, and the cities have walls, and they're very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. These guys are now complaining, and they're shivering in their boots. The descendants of Anak were like giants. So they're like, we saw giants there. And then verse 30, Caleb. You guys probably know this part. Caleb comes in. He told the people to be quiet and listen to Moses. Caleb said, let's go now and take possession of the land. We should be more than able to conquer it. And Caleb was saying, because God gave us the land, it doesn't matter if there are giants there or if there's a lot of opposition. God said we can do it. Let's go get it. And I won't read you the entire book of Numbers, but um, at the end of the day, God had blessed them, and Caleb was right. Caleb and Joshua actually were, were right, and God actually cursed the rest of the Israelites because of their scouting report, because of that report. They didn't trust what God said, which is, I'll give it to you. They trusted their own eyes, their own scouts, and their own instincts. So what do we learn from both of those stories? 
relearn, don't trust the scouting report if it's from men. Men and women are flawed. We all are. We can get it wrong sometimes. We should be asking for perspective from God. Now this is hard for me and for you and for those of us uh, who live in the modern age. It's hard to always know what God is saying. So I printed up a couple of tips for us here uh, this week. Um, number one, remember Jeremiah 29, 11. Most of you know it. It says this, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. That's God speaking. Plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So remember what God says. Number two, spend quiet time with God. I think one thing that we often get wrong in today's culture is there's too much input in our ears. We always have songs and videos and Netflix and things coming into our ears. We don't often give God the space that he deserves. So that's the number two is spend quiet time with God. Number three, ask God who you are. In that quiet time, ask God who you are. That might sound strange because you know who you are. Your name is Bill or Sue or Jimmy or Sally. Um, but ask God who you really are. Who were you made to be? And what should your passions be? Maybe he's given you a talent or a land to occupy, so to speak. You'll only know if you spend quiet time seeking the Lord and asking him. So number four is listen to the opinions of humans less. Guys, God is so much wiser and more capable than an NBA scout or your friends to tell you who you are and what you can and can't do because you should be doing these things in the name of God. So if you look different than your friends, they might tell you, oh, you're a loser. But you're not. God created you that way for a reason. If you have a weird sense of humor, God created you that way. If you're a bookworm, God created you that way. If you have a beautiful voice, God created you that way. So I'm going to give you another scripture that will hopefully encourage you. It says this, Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body or what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in their barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by being anxious, can add even a single hour to his life? And why are you so anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Guys, God knows you. He knows who you really are, and he knows who you can be, and he is right. He is correct. His scouting report is never flawed. So before you turn to your friends or your friend groups, or before you turn to social media and look for the likes to decide who you are going to be, look to the Lord before you look to the likes. Ask God, who will I be? What should I love? What should I hate? And what land have you given me? That you can trust. That is a scouting report you can trust. So don't trust the scouting report of man. Trust the scouting report of the Lord. And you won't be disappointed and you won't be wrong. I promise. Guys, I love you. I miss you. Have a great week this week. Walk with the Lord and walk in confidence knowing he has a plan for you. See ya.